didn't see you there. Oh, this? Yeah, I, it's, it's kind of cold out. I just got my uh, cup of joe and a, a wrap to eat between uh, my play sessions on the newest Call of Duty. Oh, you haven't heard of it? It's Modern Warfare 3! And, oh, I'm sorry. Let me, let me get that. Ah, now that's better. Hi, I'm Atsuki, and welcome to my first impressions video on the Modern Warfare 3 beta. It is day one. I have just played like one play session. I did a live stream on it, and I have a video going live in like a couple, like maybe hours after recording this one, so it should be out by the time you get this. This will probably be uploaded tomorrow sometime. But uh, yeah, dude, this beta, this game is gorgeous. I love it. It, it surprised me. I went from a 6 out of 10 level of hype up to like a, a 9.8 is that good i highly recommend you guys go check this beta out when you can play the free weekends when you can too like there will be one on the let me just go check the date real quick <laughs> all right so right here on playstation if you are on playstation and only playstation because playstation has exclusivity for who knows what reason it's it's garbage i'm sorry it is what it is though if you're on playstation october 8th through the 10th that is when you can get into the, the, the open beta. You don't have to pre-order the game to get into that beta. If you're on any other platform though, uh, October 14th, 15th, and 16th, you're going to be able to play the game for free with uh, just a couple maps that they put in. It's not like the full game or anything. It's just the beta. They just had uh, Skid Row, Favela, and Estate Today. They're going to have different maps uh, in the upcoming days. I know High Rise is going to come, and I think Rust was said to come too during this beta. So yeah, I want to talk about the things that I loved and some things that I think uh, could use some improvement. So let's get into that. <laughs> Man, I, I haven't eaten all day. This is really filling my tummy, and it feels good. <laughs> Since the negatives are like so little, let's get them out of the way first, okay? Uh, Battle Rage equipment is too OP. As you guys know, it was in MDV2 and it was like a field upgrade that you could use. You just jab yourself with it and your screen kind of goes red all around the sides. You, you can see your like veins popping out of your eyeballs. <laughs> but uh, it gives you faster health regeneration and I believe it gives you some resistance to the tactical equipment in the game as well. But now in MW3, it's, at a, it's just a regular piece of equipment that you can use whenever you want and your health regeneration is just constantly going up and it leads to a lot of situations like this so as you can see that's uh kind of op it, it shouldn't exist it, it should be gone by launch if it's not gone by launch don't pre-order the game <laughs> it's as simple as that it, it's just blatantly overpowered that, that's just how op it is it, it's like if you put a spe one little specialist weapon in the game as a piece of equipment <laughs> so yeah no recharge timer or anything like it, it just should be straight up removed it's way too overpowered Next up, I do want to talk about tax stance. So it's a new type of aiming down sights in this game. Instead of just like your standard hip fire and your aim down sights, you have tax stance, which is aiming on the side of your weapon. And uh, when you tax stance, it's not quite like uh, Modern Warfare 2019 and MW2's like night vision, where you have like a laser beam that you can see where you're shooting. This one is a little different. Your hip fire crosshairs, you know, the little crosshairs in the center of your screen when you're not aiming down sights they condense so they go forward they they uh go towards the middle of your screen a little bit more so your hip fire spread is not as large this is actually really neat because you can go into the close quarter ranges and you can just clear enemies out of rooms super easily and it's very fluid i i, I gotta say i recommend using it when you go into a close quarter range like in skid row and inside one of those buildings like it just it's it's really good <laughs> i think a thing a lot of people had a problem with on black ops cold war was the uh sort of like affected versus unaffected aim down sight zoom this kind of negates that a little bit so yeah like the reason that thing was a toggle in the first place was because fovs could be so much larger and when you aim down sight uh your fov it shrinks onto your sights so if your toggle is set to unaffected you're going to aim down sight as you normally did when your your when your fov was normally at 80 instead of like 100 or 120 yeah, that's what unaffected is but if you have it set to affected then it doesn't aim down sight as far it's not as much of a zoom down it just zooms down a little bit 
So with this new sort of tax stance, I think that like you could run unaffected and then this tax stance sort of thing would be the affected sort of FOV, if you get what I'm saying. You get the best of both worlds. And that's not the only benefit either. You guys can uh, walk around a little bit faster than you can while you're just regularly aiming down sights, which is a huge benefit, I think. And it makes for like really fluid gameplay. Like I love just being able to jump around the corner in a close quarters range and not aiming down sights fully onto my target. Like I can just aim down a little bit so it condenses my hip fire spread and uh, you could just easily kill an enemy that way. <laughs> I love it. It's really good. But now for the problem I have with it, which there are two. The button prompt for tax stance is not fluid enough for gameplay. So you may be wondering how to activate tax stance and like if I wanted to do what I just said, like jump into a room and like at any point in time, like how would you activate tax stance to do that? It's not actually what I thought it was going to be. Originally I thought it was going to be just like holding down your L2 button a little bit and not like all the way down. Uh, kind of similar to Vanguard's uh, blind fire mechanic and I really hated that and I'm glad they didn't go that route. But uh, what they did end up doing isn't quite as good either. It's better than that one because like when you aim down sight a little bit it would stop you from running and whatever in Vanguard and it just was not really good for gameplay but in this case in MW3 you have to first aim down sights and then you have to press down on the d-pad. Your moving stick is right here down on the d-pad is right here so you cannot move while you're doing it and you have to aim down sight. You cannot just like go up against the wall before you enter a building uh, press down on the d-pad and then run in. No, you gotta like stop yourself. You gotta halt. You gotta aim down sights and then you gotta press like tax stance and then you can go in and with your tax stance. And the same thing happens when you're going like from tax stance to regular ADS. It's just, it's not viable. And it's not something I'm gonna do on every map. For example, a state, it's a very long range map with a very like few close quarter ranges. If you expect me to just like use tax stance for a a sliver of the map, it's gonna get annoying. <laughs> so what I recommend they do is they just make tax stance L3 or left stick. You press it downwards. It's basically the uh, sprint button, except when you're aiming down sights, you're not sprinting. So instead of aiming down sights, moving my finger off the thumbstick onto my D-pad, I can now just keep my finger on the thumbstick press it down while I'm aiming down sight still, so it's not like it's a huge drastic change they have to implement, and gameplay is just infinitely improved. I think Infinite Warfare actually might have done this, or BO3 or something. Actually, no, no, no. Sniper scopes, the variable zoom scopes, they require you to plus, uh, press L3 to aim down sight a little bit farther, right? But you can't do that in this game. Sorry, let me elaborate. You're not able to use tax stance with snipers. So why not make L3 that button instead? If I'm not zooming down sights with a regular reflex sight, well, what am I doing? I'm doing nothing. So L3 as the downward D-pad button, like switch them around uh, inside the game and kablow, your, your problem solved. <laughs> I just want more seamless action, that's all. The game's already really fast paced and that's gonna be in my positives uh, in this video, so <laughs> stick around for that. And then getting into reason number two. So, tax stance, again, <laughs> when you slide in this game, you are able to shoot, unlike in like MW2 for most of its life cycle, but uh, you can you can shoot for a long portion of the slide, but it's not like you're not able to hip fire or aim down sight while you're sliding. As of now, you might be able to with a perk, but you enter tax stance when you are sliding and firing. The thing that is weird about it is that if you do hold L2 down, your aim down sight button, while you're sliding and then into a, a stand or a crouch, whatever it is after your slide, your character does not remain in tax stance. They just go back to aiming down sights. But the thing I have a problem with is how the transition works from there. It's pretty much non-existent. There is no transition. You just instantly go from here to here. No transition. So that just has to be ironed out. Easy fix. Oh, and just as a fourth sort of problem I saw in the game, like I'm sure this will be fixed for launch, but my character, G -g 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 grenade. Uh, if you ever played this beta, you probably have heard that. <laughs> it's just an audio issue where they have uh, the player saying grenade so many times in a row uh, before they actually get the whole word out. And uh, it's just overlaying audio. It it'll be ironed out for launch. Like, trust me, bro. <laughs> Now for the positives. Number one, I want to say the movement is... Woo! <laughs> World War II, BO4, MW19, Cold War, Vanguard, MW2 are all worse than this game's movement. This game lets you shoot almost instantly after you jump. 
it lets you shoot while you're sliding. The sliding isn't useless like it was in MW2. You can slide cancel really effectively and smoothly. That is one thing I want to put emphasis on. I was really worried about slide canceling returning, but it is really smooth. There is a tiny bit of a delay still, so it's not as like, uh, sweaty <laughs> and just broken and you can't break cameras with it. I like that because, uh, breaking cameras is breaking the game. It, it, it's an exploit. Dolphin diving feels pretty much the same as it is in MW2, so it's good. Maybe you're able to aim down sight and shoot a little bit faster after performing the, the dolphin dive. And then also for tax sprinting, ho, 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 ho. it now regenerates while you're running and the general duration is longer, especially with a certain perk in the game that I've been just maining because <laughs> I've been using the default loadouts. I haven't uh, actually explored too much into the creative class uh, section of the game yet, but like just on a basic gunplay level, this game is perfect. Like time to kill wise too, I didn't even talk about the time to kill, but oh, it is so much better than MW2's time to kill. Oh my God, there is just so much less random deaths where you're just dying instantly, like it's hardcore mode. The headshot multiplier isn't as high and it is noticeable. Another thing, player visibility is just super clear and it's uh it makes you stand out more uh it could be really bad at launch because of all the mdv2 cosmetics that are coming over like Nicki minaj she's just bright pink yeah that's gonna stand out but in the game currently we're just using mainly mill sims plus the vault edition pre-order skins and they're not like super duper bright but uh just the basic mill sim i think i'll have some gameplay right here if i can find it on my live stream it was four hours long so like I'm sorry if I couldn't find it, okay? <laughs> but yeah, I was on Skidro, I was looking at a staircase and a guy was standing at it in the distance. His player model is clearly darker than the environment around him. He's very easy to spot. So gameplay visibility, super good. Map, uh, oh, let's get into the maps next. I, I'm excited to talk about this. So me as a COD player, I originally started playing COD on MW3 and BO2. Then I got back into COD when I got more internet access and I started with uh, BO3 and Infinite Warfare. And then I worked my way up, uh, MWR, World War II. And then I went back to the previous Call of Duties and so on and so on and so forth. But that's not important. What is important is that I've never played the original MW2 in its heyday. I didn't even go back to it to uh, re-experience the golden era of COD, whatever you want to call it. It was just full of hackers and cheaters. I couldn't do it, <laughs> but now I can. And I gotta say, this like faster movement combined with the maps, it's, it's just good. I like it. I don't have any biases either because I, I just, I barely played the original. I, I know the map layouts from the original MW2 semi good, but I'm basically learning them for the first time right now. And as far as layouts go, I think they're actually pretty well designed. Like they really do give me Modern Warfare 2019 vibes to them, but maybe if they were just like a little bit more compact in MW19. So take Grazna Raid, for example, if that was more compact, you'd have a skid row. That's what I'm kind of trying to get at. But the layouts, like, they do feel a bit similar to MW19 maps, and I'm having a quite easy time getting into them, personally. All those safe spaces and crevices that people are complaining about in MW19, they're here. <laughs> but that's the thing. They aren't OP. They're just a learning experience. You just have to know where they are. Maps don't need to be so simplistic that they're boring. I, I don't want Call of Duty World War II map design in a boots-on-the-ground game anymore. Like... Oh, and it's kind of neat too because I've noticed some playstyles have actually returned. If you guys remember, like, just the people in the older Call of Duties sitting back in a hallway or a lane with their sniper just hard scoping, that's back on Skid Row, like the, the main hallway down like the center lane, kind of like dividing the map in half, I guess. I've noticed people just uh, sitting in the back there, sniping uh, behind the, like a, what do you call it, like a cabinet or something there. I'll, I'll probably show you guys right here in the background. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like in the past couple of Call of Duties, you just ha haven't had like that sort of play style and now it's making a resurgence. So that's kind of cool. But running and gunning is still better. <laughs> I assure you. Oh, and uh, speaking of compact map design, uh, Favela, Ugh. it's uh. It's probably my least favorite out of the beta. It's not bad, but it's uh, it's a bit too much, I think. Like, I, I kind of predicted that just from what I've seen from Favela on Call of Duty Ghosts. But it is very, it has a lot of lines of sight everywhere. And it's like, there's like three story rooftops near the center of the map. And it, it's, uh, it's an interesting map. Let's just say that much. <laughs> so yeah, that's Favela, but also a state. That map was interesting. I didn't think it would also play very well in the newer Call of Duty games, but like the, the flow actually works. Like, <laughs> I'm surprised. It's a very open map, kind of in a, in a forested area. 
it's not too too forested like the 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 trees aren't like very thick but the leaves on some of the trees are placed in the i guess the right sort of way so that they block off certain lines of sight if you're at the top of the cabin in a state and you're looking down at the map well guess what there's a bunch of trees that are uh, blocking your view except for very specific angles which i think is really good and while they did add some water in one of the back spawns of a state uh no one's gonna be using it i'm sorry it's it, it was pretty pointless it's a cool thing to notice that's different but it is very out of the way it, it it's just fat that should be trimmed off like it is more fat than that uh water canal on kutsanair district in mw2 it, it's it's worse than that because it's just like imagine that canal but deep within one of the corners of the main spawns and it, it's just like it's just a tiny little pond <laughs> with a raft in it. The map Skidrow did intrigue me. Layout wise, it's kind of like a, a donut, but like add a whole bunch of webs in the center of that donut. <laughs> but I mean by that is basically there's a lot of long, longer lines of sight around the edges of the map. And then like in the middle of the map, you have like this, uh, I guess the main building where all the action takes place. There's a first floor and a second floor to it too. On the second floor, I will say there are like a lot of rooms that are intertwined with each other. Uh, I've heard some people have had a little bit of a problem with that sort of stuff. But uh, personally, I think what makes it uh, easy to navigate is the louder footsteps in the game and I'm, I'm kind of worried for launch that uh, once they add this dead silence perk it's gonna be super hard to I guess predict where everyone is and where they're rushing on uh, skid row in that center room and uh, I'm worried because this is my favorite map in the beta so <laughs> yeah I think the movement being fast enough is a good enough incentive to uh, stop people from camping same with the time to kill so when you add a dead silence to the game it's gonna create this imbalance of perk it's gonna be the most overpowered perk in the game. You're gonna be pretty much forced to run it if you want to rush around the game. On a scale of good rusher to above a good rusher, this is the Dead Silence rusher right here. It's it's clutch. So yeah, Dead, Dead Silence has got to go. I don't think it's in the beta yet, or at least the level cap wasn't uh, high enough for players to unlock Dead Silence, but uh, yeah, it's got to go. Also, you may notice that I'm using a different hat right now. Uh, it is like day three. <laughs> I'm sorry. This video is taking a while to edit. I had work yesterday and uh, it's, it's just the morning right now. Let me get that visual consistency for you all. <laughs> so some people might say that using your ears is not a skill, but like in the, the most popular game like right now, Fortnite, you can have visual footsteps like and if you crouch walk in that game, you don't hear the footsteps. So like I, I, I don't see why that is considered unskillful. I, I think it adds more, like, uh, I guess a sweaty nature to the game. Like, you know where everyone is. You don't need, it's like more effective than red dots. Red dots uh, pinpoint your exact location. If you wanted red dots this whole time by default, like you wanted the game to be less skilled in your own terms because you're knowing where people are, uh, like you're pinpointing them exactly. So if everyone's rushing and everyone can hear each other's footsteps, there, there there's no like getting caught off guard by a camper. But yeah, I like Skid Row. I like the uh, variety offers too like you can use a lot of guns on it uh, I use the sniper and AR combo personally I've used an SMG uh, everything works even shotguns I've died the shotguns on that map too so yeah the, the layouts are pretty good so far and uh the oh, color scheme though <laughs> dude it, it, it looks gorgeous graphically though I would say this does seem like the smallest downgrade from MW2's graphics. I, I don't know what it is. I think it might be just the, the grittiness of the maps or maybe just the lighting is a little bit off some in some places. Like maybe shadows are kind of missing in some places. I did notice that, but it's like MW2, but more clean, I guess you could say. And also there's like more sort of like weather environments too. Um, Skid Row, for example, got like a, it's a very clouded sky, but also there's mist in the distance, but also the visibility is still good because it's not on the map itself like you can see people clearly through uh, every sort of line of sight it, it, it's good it's competitive i have yet to experience a moment where i'm like oh i didn't see that guy <laughs> unless it's a dark space i have noticed like the player models are darker and that maybe they do blend into the darker areas like dark corners on skid row actually yeah i do recall one instance where i did check a corner and the guy was sitting on a table but i didn't see him and then he killed me from behind when i left that room so <laughs> yeah i guess uh that uh dark visibility might be an issue it's not like horrible though it's uh just in very specific areas it, it's not common but dude like skid row it, it looks like gritty and it looks like dreary and it's not gray there's a lot of color and i and i think what matters more see like cod fans always say oh i want more uh saturation in my call of duty maps no you what you need is a good color palette colors that blend well together and I think Skid Row, it just hit the nail on the head right there. <laughs> Same with like a state. Um, I think uh, Favela's color scheme is a little bit meh. 
personally. Uh, I'll show you some gameplay of Favela right here, just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. I know the devs said that they put a lot of work into favelas, like our direction, especially like on the, I think the middle streets or alleyways and lanes, but I'm sorry. I don't like the color palette itself very much. It's just, I don't know. I think it's like, what was it? It's like maybe too yellowy and orangey and mixed with like pink. Like, eh, it's not my thing really, but Oh, Skid Row. Look at this. Look at this. Mmm. I like that. That's, that's, that's really cool. And overall, if I were to rate these maps, just like on a scale of three, like if I were to put them in order from best to my least favorite, I think Skid Row plays and looks the best. I think Estate would be next. It also looks and plays super, super well, especially if you're a sniper, like, or you just have a sniper secondary. I'm using the, the default loadout, I think it was Marksman, and has a sniper secondary with an AR. Also, the AR is kind of built for range and it feels good. I like it. I think the longer time to kill actually complements a state too because uh, you're not just getting picked off easy peasy. <laughs> you actually have to aim at, uh, at a range. Sure, like not as much with snipers, but I've I've heard some from some people that they think the snipers are a little bit weak, but I, I've been consistently been able to hit my shots right and get the one shot kills. But uh, yeah, a state would be second, Skid Row's first, and then Favela would be third. I, I think Favela is okay. It's just, uh, I feel like there's a little bit more randomness on Favela than the other two maps, and it's a little bit harder to control your engagements. Then again, I didn't play Favela too, too many times because there's map voting and not a lot of people are voting for it, unfortunately. <laughs> I got in like maybe uh, like five matches of it and then like I, uh, uh, like a lot more in the other two maps. <laughs> but yeah, those are my thoughts on the maps. <laughs> no freaking way. Okay. I, I couldn't find it when I was in the beta, but apparently Sledgehammer Games just tweeted out that you can change your tax stance button combo. Uh, they have three, uh, three options available right now. You, you can do like the traditional one where it's just ADS in the down button. You can do ADS in melee and you can do ADS in sprint or just off. Uh, like literally it's just their uh their tweet 14 hours ago <laughs> the other thing that i want to point out too is that they are on top of battle rage i i don't know why they didn't just like remove battle rage after like the pros had uh, flown out to cod next and played the game and told them it was too op then because apparently it was even more op then but uh they've uh nerfed it even more i guess now uh reduced max duration from 10 seconds to six seconds kills will no longer increase the effect duration health regeneration now begins upon killing an enemy so it's just kind of like quick fix. It's no longer a constant health regen. I don't know who thought that was a good idea. <laughs> Incoming damage will now interrupt health regeneration. Also, why wasn't that a thing before? I mean, we had stims before in Black Ops Cold War and uh, getting shot would disrupt it too. Like, I, I don't know why they thought it was a good idea to not disrupt it here because stims and battle rage are, are both tacticals. Uh, battle rage is a tactical in Modern Warfare 3, apparently not a field upgrade. Somehow they didn't think they were equal. <laughs> they thought it needed a huge buff, but no, uh, honestly, they should just remove it and replace it with stims in my opinion. Cold War stims were just perfect. Do that. And also they removed the increased health regeneration speed. So huge nerf across the board. And that's great because it was kind of ruining gunfights in my opinion. I didn't run into it too, too much my first day playing, but uh, it's good that it's no longer an issue so that we can actually like experience the gunplay without any disruptive, like increased health players. Cause God, that was just, that was just so jarring. I, I saw it a couple times on my, tr my stream and I pointed it out to you guys, but ugh. Awful. <laughs> Oh, and one more thing that I want to point out that I said in my stream too. I don't know why we're still doing kill streaks. It should just be score streaks by default. The thing that makes kill streaks inferior is that you have to assign each streak to a number. You either get one kill, two kills, three kills, four kills for a streak, right? And because there's so many streaks in the game, some streaks are going to be the same amount of kills as others, meaning that the player is going to have to pick and choose between the streaks that they want. But the thing that score streaks offered in previous Call of Duty games like BO3 and Infinite Warfare, each individual streak had their own set amount of points to get them in this game you got like the guardian and the counter uav in the same area but if this was uh one of those advanced call of duty games like bo3 the guardian would have been like 375 points and the counter uav would have been 400 points and just so you guys know it's about 100 points per kill assists give you like uh, 75 points it, that's how it works and secondly apparently there's still non-looping streaks in the game it's just one of the worst design decisions i've ever seen in call of duty non-looping streaks means that once you earn all your streaks they don't go back and uh, they don't cycle through again if i earn my uav my counter uav and then my juggernaut suit i cannot earn my uav again at the very bottom of the streak list it's awful if you're wanting to go for nukes if you're wanting to go for high streaks 
weeks. It's honestly just kind of demotivating overall. So yeah, I actually think that might be my biggest issue with this uh, beta. It's not really affecting my gameplay too much right now, but I know it will definitely affect my gameplay in the long run. My overall enjoyment will be going down. <laughs> but overall, I'd say this is a really good beta. I gave it a 9.8 out of 10. Hopefully they make some changes between now and launch, unlike last year with Infinity Ward and uh, Modern Warfare 2. We all hated the perk system in that game and nothing was done. Virtually nothing. I don't want people to forget this either because Infinity Ward during the beta last year, they changed the perk system a little bit. Like they changed the time to unlock these perks within a week. And then when Modern Warfare 2 launched, people still didn't like it. They decided to do nothing until like five months later. And on the five month mark, they, you know what they did? They altered the little timer to unlock the perks just that, just by like a couple minutes. So everything got like unlocked a couple minutes sooner. It's not what anyone wanted. And it was such an easy fix that it's virtually nothing. Again, they did it in the beta within a week. So hopefully Sledgehammer Games doesn't go down the same path. I, I really hope not. I have a theory. I think Infinity Ward wasn't able to do a lot of changes just because they wanted to sell MW3. They knew MW3 was going to get a lot of backlash. Uh, well, I mean, one of the main selling points of this game is just revisions that MW2 was like supposed to get. I, I feel like MW2 could have really even benefited from all these changes, like the movement and the new perk system, like the overhaul for the perks. MW3 also has the maps that MW2 was supposed to get. Uh, the MW2 is literally marketed with all of these these original MW2 remastered maps, right? So everyone thought they were coming to the game, but no. Get shit on COD community, you suck. So it's easy to understand why people would be skeptical about MW3. They needed uh, a lot of things that the community was wanting if they wanted to like sell people on this DLC. And I will say it is working. All these changes are really good. I, I, I quite enjoy them. So yeah, I stand by my 9.8 out of 10. I hope you guys do enjoy the beta too. Those are my thoughts and opinions. Leave yours in the comments below if you play the beta. Uh, I oh, One more thing, I want to say that I, I have been shooting uh, my teammates and my teammates have been shooting me a little bit in the beta. Like I think we're a little bit jittery. Uh, maybe it's just because we don't know the map layouts or because we're not using the mini map as much as we should be i kind of like during my stream also pointed out that i could look at the mini map and tell exactly where my teammates are easy peasy <laughs> but uh yeah when i see uav is up it's a little harder but it's a cuav it's supposed to be harder <laughs> i think a big problem with that too though just not being able to identify teammates and enemies apart is the faction system i've seen uh i even seen like uh, the act man on twitter saying oh i'm glad that factions are back but no th they aren't real factions it isn't any better than the my team versus enemy team in vanguard what made it so easy to identify players in previous call of duties like say bo3 you had red lights all over your suit infinite warfare you had red shoulder pads at world war ii the nazis were black they wore all black gear and then the allies were just wearing random stuff black ops 4 everyone was st still wearing red lights like bo3 mdv19 people were basically separated into two different factions that actually made sense it also didn't have crazy skins in the game until like way later cold war came out it was good at launch and then it got really hard because they added so many wacky skins that just like intertwined with each other's factions then you had vanguard my team versus enemy team awful couldn't distinguish people very easily from a quick glance and now we got mw2 where well guess what each faction has lost its visual consistency and with the carryover system they're all going to come into mw3 at launch it's it's not going to be fun just add a cosmetic filter infinity ward make uh things more consistent for us please thank you Bye bye that's it peace out homies hey guys my name is masuki <laughs> what if i just talked to you guys like this <laughs> wouldn't that be great <laughs> that, that actually looks really cool. I, lo I love doing like little perspective change like that. Oh, ah, that's so cool. <laughs> I'm just having fun.